You won't believe what happened when a man tried to rescue a big crocodile. It doesn't take long for the people of a Sudanese community to figure out that something is amiss when a humongous crocodile shows up in their midst. Its movements are very sluggish, and its tummy seems to be unnaturally round. The animal's gut was sliced open in a last-ditch effort to rescue it. No one could believe what was inside until it was opened. James's pulse was pounding in his chest as he crept closer to the massive crocodile, wondering how it had found it in the middle of nowhere. Even though he knows he should be the courageous one, his nerves were shot. The narrative might end at any moment if he makes even one mistake. But James was aware of his responsibilities. In his head, the decision had already been made. He felt compelled to protect the animal. There was plainly a problem, and as he approached closer, he could see exactly where the issue was in the animal's tummy. The crocodile's tummy was open surgically, and its contents were put on exhibit right away. James was so shocked that his jaw hit the ground. How did they do that? Was James too late to rescue the enormous crocodile? And what exactly did he discover when he opened it? Why, exactly, did he feel compelled to risk his life to save such a potentially lethal animal? Crocodiles may often be seen swimming in the murky Nile River. They've called this place home for a long time. The inhabitants are always fighting for their lives as these apex predators roam the seas seeking for their next meal. They tend to avoid one another whenever feasible. Young villager children are warned about the dangers of the crocodile habitat from an early age. A direct encounter is certain to fail. At least, that's the standard assumption. But on that one tragic day, James did something that no one in his family would have approved of had he informed them in advance. In the cause of what James believed to be the greater good, he chose to disregard the many warnings he had received over the years. James, a 38-year-old man, has spent his whole life in the same remote hamlet in Sudan. This is also where he met the woman who would become his wife and start his family. About 12 years have passed since they first moved in together. While not ideal, one could certainly do worse. James's family has a small farm near the Nile, so they have more than enough food to feed themselves and their neighbours for over three years. His capitan to aid others in his community increases his already high profile there. The locals not only think highly of James, but also of another notable attribute of his, his fearlessness. Everyone in his family is aware of this. The reality, however, is that threats in Sudan are always present. The day might take a dramatic turn for the worst at any moment, whether due to the actions of animals or people from neighbouring communities. James, however, has always faced danger squarely and has the scars to prove it. If a citizen of the area inquires as to his whereabouts, he will proudly recount his many exploits. James's antics generally went down well with the locals, and he earned their admiration. The position of unofficial leader might be applied to him. Consequently, when this specific circumstance came lately, everyone looked to James for guidance. There were no water-based dangers for the villagers to contend with, despite the villagers' proximity to the Nile. They seldom ventured far from the river's surface. The locals also know there are sections of the river they should avoid. Using this method, they are able to stay out of harm's path. Only today has one of these potentially lethal animals crossed across from the river bank. The fact that the animal had emerged from the river was obviously an issue since it had never occurred while James was a resident of the community, but there was more to the story. A monstrous crocodile, the likes of which no one in the community had ever seen before, had emerged from the river and taken up residence in the worst conceivable place, and things were becoming very difficult. It established its home in the tunnel that farmers in the Nile Valley had dug to get water from the Nile to their fields. The crocodile had successfully blocked practically all of the water, resulting in the insufficient irrigation of their crops. An extended stay by the crocodile might make this a serious issue. This was unnoticed at first, but the villagers would eventually figure out what was wrong. A group of ladies were making their way to the river to do laundry. They were shocked at first when they saw the enormous beast, but then they learned something. After a closer inspection, they realized the crocodile was preventing them from getting water. 
Upon realizing their predicament, the ladies promptly sought advice from James. James did not waste any time and sprang into action. Inquiring minds among the local men sent him there. What a problematic scenario this was, it became instantly evident. It didn't seem that the crocodile would be moving any time soon. James was already aware of the animal's usual difficulties in exiting the river, as the ladies had informed him. It was a marvel that this enormous creature had wandered here. Now James could see for himself how the colossal crocodile's every action seemed to be performed in glacial slow motion. Not even trying to relocate the crocodile on their own would work. It was still a serious threat, even if it was too sluggish to move and harm them. More importantly, this species seems to be much too large to be just brushed aside. There should have been another way to go about this. Numerous proposals were batted about among the townsfolk, but killing the animal and getting people to assist relocate it afterward emerged as a clear frontrunner. James, though, was staunchly against this. The concept had potential, yet it ran against to his values. James has been taught the value of life from an early age, and he believes that taking the life of this unusually huge crocodile would be a waste. He just couldn't take it. And also, he had picked up on something while studying the creatures from a distance. In his travels, James had seen several crocodiles. From the way it was behaving and the way it was staring out of his eyes, he could tell that this one was quite ill. He felt obligated to assist the animal in need. James could not bear to see the creatures in distress. As luck would have it, James knew just who to call for help with this issue. A visitor came to the town a few weeks ago to learn more about their approach to dealing with issues with wild animals. This guy may assist James in rescuing the colossal crocodile. The guy, a wildlife conservationist, had urged them to limit their slaughter of exotic and unusual creatures. Furthermore, people should contact him first if they are having serious issues. Which is exactly what James did. He reached out to the guy for some assistance and received a response. This British wildlife expert, called Martin, was sent to Sudan to ensure the survival of endangered species there. He was well aware that a great number of these creatures inhabited the area close to James's hometown. It was because of the legend of the gigantic crocodile that he had come here a few weeks ago, he had heard about it in a nearby town and was quite curious to see it for himself. But as a still image or moving movie, he couldn't go very far. Being that he was still two days away from arriving there. The town residents could not wait that long for the water system to be repaired. Now that they knew Martin wouldn't be able to reach them in time, they had to try something else, killing the crocodile was once again a viable option. As a bonus, the people would have enough food to last for a few more days. The whole town could sit down to eat off of this beast. The increased yield would help compensate for the crop that was lost because of the water shortage. Martin appealed with the villagers to save the animal's life, saying he would reward them with extra food supplies. There was a strong sentiment among the villagers to go forward with their plan despite Martin's warnings. But James was the one who listened to Martin, and he had already made up his mind to save the animal. But now that he did, it was likely to deepen his ties to those who might implement lasting change in the community. James has been working toward this improvement for quite some time. The short-term benefits of killing this animal are obvious, but James has never seen a subject in such a black and white way. James is someone who can take in the big picture and considers potential outcomes. He had earned his position as the de facto head of the community. Some villagers came around to James's point of view after he had spent some time persuading them. But they were going to try and rescue the animal immediately. But it's still unclear how Martin got from there to the village in under two days. That's just not feasible. Something else would have to work. Martin was well versed on large game animals, but he also recognized the necessity for expert counsel. And with that, he had a fresh point of contact in this predicament. He was able to arrange up a video chat between James and the head of the Gator community in the United States. This would allow them to present the animal to her and seek her guidance on how to proceed. James began shooting the animal from all angles to let the veterinarian inspect it thoroughly. He proceeded with great caution, 
since the animal they were attempting to rescue was still very much at risk of dying. James's communication with the veterinarian was highly ineffective. Thankfully, this wasn't an issue. The vet was able to pinpoint the probable cause of the animal's illnesses despite the weak connection and low camera quality. In as much detail as Michel could understand, she gave him the explanation. After giving the crocodile a thorough examination, the veterinarian had little trouble determining what was probably wrong with the animal. The vet saw that the crocodile's tummy bulged in a peculiar place, and combined it with the unusual shape of its digestive system, and came to the conclusion that something was probably clogging the crocodile's tummy. Probably the crocodile ate something it couldn't break down. It's possible that the animal's immobility is due to the severity of its illness. The thing had just run out of steam. But the question remains, what did the crocodile eat? What, then, could James and the rest of the town do to remedy the situation? The doctor told James that extracting whatever was stuck in the crocodile's mouth was their last hope of saving the animal's life. Extraction from the crocodile would need precise surgical incisions. Who was going to volunteer for such a risky task? When James shared the vet's warning with the community, he could feel all eyes turn to him. James knew no one else would be prepared to risk opening the crocodile, and he didn't blame them. There's nobody else who would be interested in taking on the role. Fortunately, he was successful in persuading the other villagers to assist him capture the crocodile. For James's sake, they returned to the settlement to stock up on necessities. The locals collected several tools, including ropes to bind its mouth and fabric to cover its eyes. Also, they want to pull ropes around the animal and fix these ropes in the ground so that its body is flat on the ground. The crocodile's mobility was therefore effectively disabled. The people had circled back to the crocodile and were now tying it up. Although this was a major surgery, the crocodile put up little resistance, further demonstrating the poor condition it was in. James went to his office when he felt secure enough to do so. Another villager videotaped James as the vet remained on the video link to educate him. This helped James choose the best course of action for rescuing the crocodile. Using a knife that has been heated in the fire to eliminate any germs. It was James who made the first cut. Fortunately, the crocodile showed little response, and James did not NRS quo. You won't have to dig very deeply to reach the snag. It took him two additional incisions to reach the Tommy's opening. The crocodile's hole was quickly pulled open, and the item was freed. It was an old blue football. This was something that he hadn't anticipated. He couldn't figure out where the crocodile got it. From there was no one in his village who's has a blue football, but who knows how long it had been stuck in the crocodile's gut. We couldn't afford to ponder the situation much longer. In a hurry, James taped the crocodile's leathery skin as tightly shut as he could after stitching up the reptile's wounds. The vet had been in touch with Michel and given him more instructions, Michel had acted in accordance with those directions. Some of the locals went to acquire some older fish for the animal to eat while he did this so that they could lower it out of the stream. They returned to find the animal released from its bonds and visibly more alert than before the procedure had been performed. In order to get the crocodile back into the water, the villagers laid up a trail of the old fish heading to the water, and the crocodile slowly but excitedly began following the track. Plants in the village were watered once more. This meant that the crop was saved. James called Martin immediately to share the good news, and Martin was assured that his community would be lavishing him with gifts of food and supplies as a token of appreciation for his efforts. When James shared the good news with the villagers, they were ecstatic. For this mission, James had put his life in danger. But in the end, everything turned out well. He had greatly improved his position as head of his town, and they were living in much better conditions than previously. The crocodile has returned to the river and is doing well.